What's going on guys? This is going to be a tutorial on how to set up a RAID 0 and a Hackintosh running Mac OS X Lion 10.7.3. Here we are back inside the machine that I built for my client. If you're interested in me building a machine for you, feel free to contact me, make it fully Hackintosh compatible. Um, if you want to watch the video of it actually being built, uh, you know, everything, the motherboard, all that stuff, go ahead and click right here, about two and a half hours of just of me building a computer, answering questions, and things like that, so go ahead and check that out. But anyway, back to this video, there are a few things that you're going to need to do this, and so I'm going to go ahead and jump into those. The first thing you're going to need is an existing OS X installation that is not part of either one of the drives that are going to go in your RAID. In this case, we have this guy, this is an OCC Agility 3 solid state. Uh, we have Mac OS X Lion running on this, and I don't believe there's a way that you can do this tutorial without this drive, like just having your RAID drives. If there is, go ahead and comment down below, but regardless, even if there is, I think this way is just easier. The so, second thing we're going to need is the Chimera, aka Chimera, if you're a longtime viewer of mine, the uh, Chimera standalone installer. This can be downloaded right from Tony Mac, go ahead and get that. The third thing we're going to need is a program called Pacifist. Basically what Pacifist is, it's a way to extract certain things from package files, in this case that Chimera standalone installer. So we're going to need that. I believe they have a trial version, just go ahead and Google Pacifist Mac and I'm sure you'll find it. The fourth thing you're going to need is a program called Carbon Copy Cloner. What that's going to allow us to do is to clone this existing OS X installation onto the RAID. So that's very easy, very nice to have. You're also going to need a way to boot into a Mac OS X installer. In this case, I'm going to be using my uh, Unibeast flash drive. If you want to know how to create one of these guys or just what Unibeast is, go ahead and click right here. That'll take you to part four of my Hackintosh from start to finish series, in which case I show you how to do all that stuff from start to finish. Very cool stuff. And obviously you're going to need the two drives that are going to be part of the raid. So that's everything you're going to need. And before I ramble anymore, I'm just going to go ahead and jump right into the tutorial. So here we are booted into that existing OS X installation and the first thing you want to do is actually set up the RAID in Disk Utility. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to come up to Spotlight, open up Disk Utility, and so on the left here you can see that we have the 60GB that we're currently booted in and we have the two 120GB solid states. So the first thing to do in Disk Utility is set up the RAID and in order to do that you want to select both drives and usually what I do is I just come down here and do a command click that will highlight both of them and drag them in. So I'm actually going to call this uh, Macintosh, if I can spell, Macintosh RAID. Um, obviously you want this journal, that's just what OS 10 is going to be installed to. And instead of mirrored, which is basically like a RAID 1, which is essentially a real-time backup, I'm going to do a striped RAID. So that will give us that RAID 0. And we're going to, actually I'm going to go into options and make this a uh, 64 stripe. I'm actually not quite positive on, you know, the big differences between these. But as far as I know, just so you know, the bigger stripes are for uh, bigger file transfers, like uh, video editing and things like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and click OK there. And we're going to create this RAID. This will take, I would say, anywhere from... 30 seconds to a minute, so we'll be right back. Alright, so now that that's done in Disk Utility, you see something a little bit different. Each one of these drives now is a RAID slice. So, and you actually have, you know, the actual RAID right here. You can see it just doubles the size, 240 gigabytes. That's all good. Now what you want to do is you want to do a Command I while this is selected. That's going to bring up the information about the RAID. What you need from here is this RAID identifier number right here. So go ahead and copy this. And you can just throw this in, say, a text, uh, text edit document. So go ahead and just throw this back off to the side. So now we're done inside of Disk Utility. So now what we're going to do is we're going to open up Carbon Copy Cloner. And now that that RAID is set up, as you can see it's just located right over here, we're going to clone this solid state onto the RAID. So the source is Macintosh SSD and the destination is Macintosh RAID. So now just hit clone, throw in your extremely secure password, and this will only take a couple minutes. And one thing that we're going to do just, you know, while this is all copying, we're going to open up the drive you're currently booted into and just take your extra folder and copy it to your desktop. So now that that's on your desktop, we just want to go ahead and open that up. And you want to open this org chameleon uh, boot.plist. We're going to open that with text edit. And you're going to see something that looks a little bit like this. So in the description, there's a little code that we're going to have to put here. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this to my clipboard. And right here where it says kernel flags in between the string, unless you have something here that you know you need, you can more than likely delete it. So I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that's unlocked. And that's exactly uh, what's in the description right here. Now as you can see, we have the paste RAID identifier. So this uh, little thing that you pasted or copied earlier, we're going to take that and we're going to copy that. and up to where it says space. The space we need is actually right here. That's just letting you know you need a space here. So we're going to go ahead and go up to that equal sign and paste that RAID identifier. And now we're going to go ahead and save that, do a command S, and now we can move on. And actually that was uh, some pretty good timing as this just finished. 
Alright, so as you can see, that's done, and pretty impressive speeds. In about two, two and a half minutes, we moved about eight gigabytes, so that's some pretty good speed. So now we can close out of Carbon Copy Cloner, and we don't need that, but I'll just go ahead and drag it off to the side. Now you're going to need to open up Pacifist. And that'll bring up this guy, we're not going to install, and that'll bring you up to this little main pacifist window here. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up the package, and on my desktop inside this raid stuff folder is the Chimera 1.1, or 1.9.1 update. So whatever version of Chimera you have, it should be fine, go ahead and click open. And now what you simply want to do is drop down to the user standalone directory, there would be an i386 folder, copy everything except this guy right here, this boot 0 md that's the only one you don't need from that folder, so just go ahead and copy all those right to your desktop. Go ahead and extract, put in your extremely secure password one more time. And now those three files are on your desktop, that's fine, go ahead and just leave them there. Now here's where it gets really fun, but pretty easy uh, for you guys just because all the, the terminal commands you need to know are in the description. So we're going to open up a terminal window, and the first thing you want to do is make sure that in your preferences you have a password set, because we do have to use the sudo command, and that does require a password. So if you're one of those people that just doesn't have a password, you just leave it blank, you will need to assign a password here. So the first thing we want to type in is sudo su, that gets us into super sudo. Go ahead and type in that extremely secure password of yours, and now we're in. The next thing you want to do is type in disk util list. And that'll show all the active, you know, drives and partitions on your system. And I will say that if you have like a USB drive or anything, you can go ahead and, and unplug it because that'll just complicate this process. So there's a few things you want to make note of here. Look for the ones that have the Apple Boot Boot OS 10 in them. So that, that would be these two. So this is disk zero and disk one. These are the two that are going to make up your RAID. This disk two here, that's what I'm currently booted into, and then this disk three is the actual RAID, as you see by the 200 and almost about the 240 gigabytes here. So these two 120s are the drives that are going to be in the RAID. But uh, for you, these drive letters may change. They could for you, these these two drives could be one and two or two and three. So just make sure that you're aware of that as we go on with these terminal commands. So now what you want to do right now is change the directory that terminal looks at to the desktop. So you're going to do that by typing cd for change directory, and then desktop with a capital D. And from here on out, we can go ahead and start copying the terminal commands from the description. The first one is this guy right here. Now keep in mind with this at the end here, this disk zero, you want to make sure that zero is the first drive that has this boot, uh, this boot, boot OS 10 on it. So the first drive that's going to be in your RAID. In my case, it is drive zero, but yours could be one, two, three, et cetera, et cetera. So just go ahead and make sure. And there you go, hit enter, and, and it looked like nothing happened, but in reality, something did happen. Now you want to do the same thing, but change that number at the end to correspond to your second drive that's going to be in the RAID. In my case, it's disk 1. So after hitting enter, go ahead and copy the next terminal command, which is going to be this guy. And once again, the 0s3, the s3 corresponds to the partition on that drive. So disk 0, partition 3. That'd be this guy right here. So make sure that the 0 and the 3 correspond to this Apple Boot Boot OS 10 directory here. So that's okay. I'm just going to go ahead and hit enter. And you can see 2 plus 0 records in and out. 1024 bytes transferred. That's all well and good. So now we're going to copy and paste the same command, but instead of disk 0 S3, it's going to be disk 1 S3 because that's the second drive in my RAID. And now moving on to this third command here. We're going to go ahead and paste that. Disk Util mount disk 0 S3. Now keep in mind, once again, as all the others, make sure it's the first um, the first drive of your RAID and the Apple Boot Boot OS 10 partition. And then once we hit enter, you can actually see over here that it mounted. So I'm going to open this up and you can see what these next terminal commands are going to do. Basically, they're just going to copy these two things to the root of this drive. So we're going to go ahead and input the terminal commands. I believe you could just um, copy these right from the desktop, but I think this next terminal command uh, that we're going to show right here, I believe that dash r, I'm not a terminal expert by any means at all, but I think what that does is something with permissions, I could be wrong, but uh, I would just do it this way just because I know it works, I've done it, so you can try and experiment with just copying them on, but I would just do it this way. So uh, now that those two are done, we're going to unmount this drive, so make sure it's the, this is the same as this, and make sure that the 0s3 corresponds to the first drive in your RAID, and the third partition, or in this case, the Apple Boot Boot OS 10 partition. So that's going to be unmounted, and as you can see, that window disappears. That's exactly what we want. And now you want to do the same exact thing, just for the second drive of your RAID, in my case, disk 1s3. So as you can see, that one is now mounted. We're going to input those same terminal commands. And now I'll copy that bootloader and that extra folder onto the root. 
like that. And now we're simply just going to unmount that drive by pasting this guy. Okay, so now we're done with this. Um, you can, I always exit, you know, appropriately, I guess. Uh, I don't think it's required, but it's just something that I've always gotten in the habit of doing. It's sort of like just shutting your computer down properly. That's just how I look at it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pop that Chimera bootloader into your machine and go ahead and boot into the OS X installer. So before going on, I do want to mention that this whole part of the process can be sort of trial and error depending on your system. I've had many weird things that I've done that really should have worked but didn't, and then things that finally got it to work, but I don't know why, like why it wouldn't work if I did it another way. But what I've had to do is I actually unplugged my solid state. This is just something I've done at this step every time I've had a successful installation and it's just worked. And other times that I didn't do this, it didn't work. So I did unplug every single drive except that Unibeast flash drive and my RAID drives. So any other flash drive, any other solid state, hard drive, anything else just has to be unplugged or at least had to be unplugged in order for me to get it to work. So with that said, I'm going to power up the system here and I'm going to boot into that Unibeast flash drive. So here we go, and I'm going to hit F12 to get me into my boot devices. And now that I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and boot into the flash drive. And as you can see right now, it's not detected. Um, like I said, just weird things that'll happen, that's fine. Go ahead and boot into Unibeast. Alright, so here we are at the Unibeast installer. And real quick, I'll kind of explain what I'm going to be doing here. In the last terminal commands that we did, when we copied over those files to that boot boot OS X um, partition, what it did is it marked that as active, and that's not the partition that has the OS on it. So what I'm going to be doing here is opening up ter terminal from uh, the Unibeast installer and inputting some more commands that'll mark the second partition or you know the RAID partition as the active one. So I'm going to go ahead and come up here to terminal. I'll go ahead and zoom into this for you guys. All right, so hopefully you can see this. I'm going to type in that same uh, diskutil list command. And that'll bring up pretty much like every, I believe, like every SATA drive that we have open, or I don't know what all these are, but um, those aren't what's important. What are important are the two hard drives in our RAID. So right now, uh, as I sort of explained already, these are the partitions right now that are marked as active, when in reality it has to be this partition, the Apple RAID. So as you can see, this partition is only 134 megabytes, whereas this one is the full 120 gigabytes. So keep in mind um, that you have to know the drive number and the partition number for each one of these. So mine are 0s3 and then 1s3, so keep that in mind down here. So what I'm going to type in is fdisk space dash u space backslash dev backslash rdisk0. And do you want to write a new master boot record? Just type y for yes. And now you want to type in a similar command fdisk space dash e space backslash dev slash r disk zero and now where you get that f disk one greater than sign just type in f2 that means we're going to flag the second partition then type w and type y and now that one's all set now i'm going to type exit just to get out of that little f disk menu and then coming back here i'm going to do the same exact thing but instead of for disk zero we're going to do it for disk one so once again f disk space dash u space backslash dev slash r disk one I wish to write the new master boot record yes just type y for yes f disk space dash e space backslash dev slash r disk one f two w y now that's it now you can simply exit out of the terminal and that'll bring you back to pretty much nothing and we're going to go ahead and restart so once this reboots, you want to unplug the Unibeast drive, which I just did. And now, uh, so the only drives you want to have plugged in right now are the two drives that are a part of your RAID 0. So that's going to go ahead and boot up. And in my BIOS, I do have it configured just to boot from those drives. As you can see, now we have Macintosh RAID 1. And we're going to go ahead and boot up. Now I will say that the first time it boots up with this is usually uh, pretty slow. Like usually by now it's already booted and at the OS, but right uh, the first time that you do this it probably will boot somewhat slow. But so here we are, here's your cloned partition and now we are booting from the RAID. So we are in fact on a RAID 0 on a Hackintosh right now. And so you guys can see the speeds that we're going to get. I'm going to go ahead and run this um, speed test here, the black magic speed test. Go ahead and hit start. And as you can see we are getting uh, <laughs> about 900 for the right and about I uh, see it's actually kind of slow we're, gonna, we're just gonna let it run a few more times so let's see about 820 830 ish for right 
There we go, 938, 937. So we are getting about those one gigabyte per second uh, read and write speeds. The write's obviously a little slower, but that's usually the case. So that, there you guys go. That's, that's all there is to it to run a RAID 0 on a Hackintosh. So I do want to mention pretty quick just before this video ends that I did just install um, Trim Enabler for Multibeast. I restarted and I do have Trim enabled. So we're going to go to Serial ATA and uh, we're on that Corsair Force GT. As you can see right here, I'll go ahead and zoom in. We in fact do have Trim enabled on, these, on the solid state. So there's nothing to really to worry about there. So the, um, the life of these drives should not be affected by doing this. And so with that said, that's pretty much all there is to it to run a RAID 0. It's not too hard, but from system to system, you may run into some weird things. I'll try to help you guys as best as I can if following these instructions didn't help you. But I'm at CPU Kid on Twitter if you have any questions at all. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did or if it helped you, go ahead and give it a big old thumbs up. And don't be afraid to request any other videos you guys want to see in the future. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.